When General Surovikin took command, he is the new theater commander. In other words, the equivalent of, uh, say, Schwarzkopf or Tommy Franks and CENTCOM. He is now the Western theater commander for everything that happens in and around Ukraine. And when he took command, uh, there were certain agreements that were made and new decisions from President Putin. Number one, uh, we, are, we are going to prepare for a decisive operation to end the war. In other mm -hmm. words, no more, no more simply defend southern Ukraine and the territory that we've annexed. No more expectation of serious negotiations with anybody. Those are over. We have to now end the war. How do you end the war? Well, you launch offensive operations that are so devastating in their power and destructiveness that the enemy cannot resist them. However, if you're going to do that, you have to scale back current activities. In other words, you've got to make some changes on the ground, shuffle troops, change resource commitments, because you are now building up forces that are not in southern Ukraine, except for some are there, but most are not that are being prepared with this mobiliz mobilization force of 300,000 integrated into this new force for these future offensive operations, which I've talked about before, which others have mentioned, which will come this winter once the ground freezes. Now, it hasn't gone below 37 degrees at night in Ukraine, and it's got to drop below freezing significantly and stay there for the ground to freeze. So it's not going to happen until that has, has done, is done. Now, in Kherson, they had about 25,000 troops sitting in Kherson city. The Ukrainians were trying to assemble 40 to 60,000 to attack it. And there was a debate. Well, can we defend it? Yeah, we can probably defend it, but is it worth it? And what are we going to do about the Russians that live in Kherson? Remember, we're operating in an area where the people that live in that part of Ukraine are Russians. Right. So they said, no, that's going to be, that's going to be very difficult. So they said, no, let's withdraw the civilians. And so for the last several weeks, you've seen the movement of civilians in Kherson out. Right. Once think, that was, I, I think was it was like 115,000 civilians out of Kherson over the past three weeks. I, if I, I, don't yeah. know. I don't know, but a substantial, virtually the whole population has left. And some of the people being interviewed on the way out said that, yes, the, the shelling from the Ukrainian side was becoming increasingly severe and intense. So, yeah, we probably should leave. The 25,000 troops who were there were well prepared to defend it, but they said, no, let's not do that. Let's pull them across and redistribute those assets elsewhere. A lot of these soldiers that are in, in southern Ukraine, about 70,000 to 80,000 of them, have been fighting for several months. There is an interest in giving them some rest uh, and refitting them for the future offensive. So pulling these 25,000 troops made operational sense. Now, strategically, Putin's not concerned about what we in the West think, but I think he is concerned about what's happening in Russia. And the average Russian on the street is extremely upset. He takes the position that this is Russia, Russian territory. We should be moving forward. We need to liberate Odessa. We need to liberate Kharkov. These are Russian cities. That's what we need to do. Why are we falling back? And they've tried to explain that this is not a sudden decision. This was carefully considered. The, the priority right now is to consolidate control over what we have. Let's not take any unnecessary casualties. And if the enemy goes into Kherson in great numbers, guess what? The entire place is carefully targeted for annihilation. In fact, the southern Ukrainian command made an announcement that they were concerned that perhaps this was a trap, hmm. that if they go in great numbers into Kherson, that the Russians will, in fact, concentrate their striking power, rockets, missiles, artillery in great quantity and kill everything that goes into Kherson because there are no Russians living there now. So the Ukrainians aren't stupid. They're, they're actually on to something. They understand that this could be very dangerous for them to move in there in great numbers.